So in this video, we will learn about the different drugs which we are, which we used in retinoscopy while performing the cycloplegic refraction, right? Uh, in short, we will discuss about all the anticholinergic drugs in the eye, right? So as you can see, this is our a bicep muscle. For example, this is a bicep muscle and this is our central nervous system. This is exon and different nerves are coming from that exons. These are uh, motor neurons, right? which are coming through the axon and are penetrating in the muscle fibers. Suppose this is a uh, bicep muscle. So in every of the muscles in the body, that specific muscle have different muscle fibers, right? The muscles which is bicep has hundreds of the muscle fibers. The muscle in, in my eye, like the medial recti muscles, the lateral rectus muscle, the ciliaris muscles, which helps in accommodation has different muscles fibers, right? The eye has less muscle fibers, the muscles of the eye, right? And the muscles like the biceps and triceps has multiple and hundreds of, you can say, the muscle fibers. Suppose, for example, for the sake of learning, I have draw a, a bicep muscle and from the axons, from the central nervous system, the motor neurons are coming from the axon and are penetrating in the muscle fibers. Here are different muscle fibers, right? In the bicep muscles so every of the motor neuron is penetrating in a specific muscle fibers like this so it means each muscle fiber has its own motor neuron so when all of these motor neurons will act together simultaneously then the muscles will contract right so now we will learn about the phenomena that how a muscles contract in the body how are muscles in the body contract so now these are motor neurons which are coming from the central nervous system and these are muscle fibers different muscle fibers and you know that that specific point where these motor neurons are meeting together with the muscle fiber that junction that point is called the neuromuscular junction so when the action pot potential will come from the central nervous system towards the muscle fibers to contract then a specialized neurotransmitter will release and that is called acetylcholine that neurotransmitter is called acetylcholine and acetylcholine will release over here at the point of neuromuscular junction where these two structures are meeting together so now here the neuromuscular neurotransmitter will release that is called the acetylcholine And when acetylcholine will release over here, then the sodium potassium gates channels will open up, right? So they will open. So the acetylcholine will help to open up the sodium potassium gates channels. Then after opening these channels, the sodium ion with positive ion will move inside the muscle fibers right that is called the influx of the sodium ions and when the sodium ion will penetrate in the muscle fibers and you know that in the muscle fibers there are cytosol and endoplasmic reticulum inside the muscles endoplasmic reticulum so when the sodium ion will influx will move inside the muscle fibers the calcium ion the calcium positive ion will release inside the muscle fibers and when the calcium ion will release over here the muscle will contract so it means the action potential will come by via the motor neurons the motor neurons are carrying the action potential though that action potential will come over here at the level of neuromuscular junction and at the level of neuromuscular junction a neurotransmitter will release over here and that neurotransmitter will open up the sodium potassium channels or gates the sodium will penetrate the influx of the sodium ions will occur and when the sodium will move inside then inside the cells the endoplasmic reticulum will release the calcium ions and when the calcium ion will release 
the muscle will contract so it means the acetylcholine is very helpful in contraction of any muscles the calcium ion is very essential for the contraction of the muscle and now we will discuss about the anticholinergic drugs the anticholinergic drugs are also called the antiparasympathetic drugs you know that the autonomic nervous system has two different aspects the first one is called the parasympathetic nervous system and the second one is called the sympathetic nervous system right so if we talk about the sympathetic activity the sympathetic nervous system so this nervous system is actually about the fight and flight the emergency modes right if i am running if i am emotionally stressed if i am very happy if i am scared these are these are activities are indicate to the sympathetic activity to the sympathetic nervous system right the fight and flight the emergency modes of the body right and if you talk about this one the parasympathetic activity the parasympathetic activity is actually about the rest position the rest and digest right the feed and the breed positions of the body right these conditions are called the parasympathetic activities of the body so you know that in the sympathetic activity my pupil will be dilated if i am running if i am emotionally stressed if i am very happy if i am scared my pupil will it means i am in the excited form i am in the sympathetic activity i am involved in the sympathetic activity i am involved in the sympathetic nervous system right so in this condition my pupil will be dilated so if i instill the anticholinergic drugs which are called anti parasympathetic drugs and what when i say anti parasympathetic it means it will inhibit the actions of the parasympathetic activity right and if we are inhibiting the parasympathetic activity it means the sympathetic activity will be increased so in sympathetic activity the pupil will dilate so it means when we instill the anticholinergic drugs when we instill the anti parasympathetic drugs or we can say when we instill the anti muscarinic drugs in the eye the pupil will be dilated and then accommodation will be at rest so now we will discuss about the cholinergic drugs right you know that some drugs are the mitratics and some drugs are called the cycloplegics you know that first we will discuss about the mitratics as name indicates that the drugs which are used the drugs which are helpful in the dilation of the pupil are called mitratics right and specifically and individually the phenylephrine is the drug which is called mitratic this phenylephrine is useful is helpful in the dilation of the pupil right this is called phenylephrine which is mitratics and rest of them the atropine homatropine tropicamide and cyclopentolate these four drugs are used as cycloplegics and what are now cycloplegics the cycloplegics are the drugs which are used for the resting of the accommodation the paralysis of the accommodation right if i instill these drugs atropine homatropine tropicamide in my eye then my accommodation will go at rest these drugs will paralyze my ciliaris muscle and accommodation will not occur in my eye in my crystalline lens right so simultaneously if the paralysis of accommodation is there and with dilation of the pupil if these two phenomena are occur occurring simultaneously then it is called cycloplegia and those drugs which help in paralysis of accommodation and pupil dilation those drugs are called cycloplegic drugs right and individually if only pupil dilation is there that drug is called phenylephrine which is a midratic drug now we will discuss about the mechanism of action of all these drugs and first we will discuss first we will learn about uh, the mechanism of action of the cycloplegics of the atropine of the homatropine of cyclopentolate right of midrazil or you can say the tropicamide right now what is the mechanism of action of these cycloplegic drugs so now what is the actually the mechanism of action of the cycloplegic drugs like if we talk about the atropine so what is the mechanism of action you know that the atropine is a drug which is used to paralyze the accommodation one thing and the second thing thing is 
to dilate the pupil so dilation of the pupil and paralysis of accommodations both these phenomena will occur simultaneously if i instill iatropine drug in my eye so what is the mechanism of action at where location these drugs will act upon right so as you know that at the ciliaris muscle you know that this is the structure of the eye which i draw over here uh, this is called the ciliary body and that specific point is called suppose the ciliaris muscle right and this is pupil right so normally normally the muscarinic muscarinic receptors are there in the ciliaris muscle and the constrictor pupillae muscle right you know that the ciliaris muscles is the muscle of the crystalline lens is the muscle of the ciliary body right which is actually helpful in the accommodation right so there is the muscarinic receptor 3 right i can write it here the muscarinic receptor is there at the level of the ciliaris muscles so what is the function of this m3 muscarinic receptor this muscarinic receptor this m3 receptor is actually helpful in the contraction of the ciliaris muscle right and if you know that you know the mechanism of accommodation if the uh, you know if the ciliaris muscles is contract then the zonules will relax and when the zonules will relax then the lens will be more globular right so accommodation will occur so it means that this muscarinic m3 receptors is actually helpful in the process of accommodation right which which receptors m3 receptor which is called muscarinic receptors and the same muscarinic receptors same m3 receptors is there in the constrictor pupillae muscles of the iris right so here is the constrictor pupillae muscles which is a circular muscles here is m3 muscarinic receptor is there so these muscarinic receptors m3 at the level of the circular muscles of the sphincter pupillae of the iris is there to constrict the pupil and the same muscarinic receptor which is m3 muscarinic receptors is there in the ciliaris muscles to stimulate accommodation so it means in short the muscarinic receptors in the eye at the level of pupil sphincter pupillae and at the level of the ciliaris muscles both of these phenomena like the accommodation and the constriction of the pupil are responsible for the stimulation of the m3 muscarinic receptors if m3 muscarinic, muscarinic receptors will act upon on these structures then accommodation will occur accommodation will exerted and pupil constriction would be there so our drugs actually will inhibit both of these phenomena right if i say as i said that the cycloplegic drugs will act upon these ciliaris muscle and the sphincter pupillae muscles right so these drugs are called anticholinergic drugs are also called somehow the anti muscarinic receptors sorry the anti muscarinic drugs so it means the anticholinergic drugs which are also called anti muscarinic drugs will inhibit the action the function of the muscular receptors sorry muscarinic receptors m3 so it means when we instill the atropine in the eye when we instill the atropine in our eye that atropine will affect on the muscarinic receptors at the level of ciliaris muscle and that atropine will also affect at the level of sphincter pupillae so when our atropine which is a anti muscarinic will act upon the muscarinic receptors so both of these functions will inhibit it right the lens would be unable or you can say the ciliaris muscles would be unable to accommodate so the accommodation would be paralyzed right due to the installation of the atropine because the atropine is actually the anticholinergic the anti muscarinic drug 
so it will inhibit the ciliaris muscles and accommodation would be paralyzed right and if i instill the atropine that the action of the muscarinic m3 receptors at sphincter pupillae which is helpful in the constriction of the pupil then this constriction of the pupil this action would be inhibited so the constriction so the sphincter pupillae would be unable to constrict the pupil then the, the, the pupil would be dilated so this is actually the mechanism of action of the cycloplegic drugs which is, which are also called the anticholinergic drugs and they are also called the anti muscarinic drugs because they are actually inhibiting the action of the muscarinic receptors at ciliaris muscles and at sphincter pupillae muscle right this mechanism of action is, is for the all cycloplegic drugs like atropine like homotropine like uh, cyclopentolate right and like tropicamide all of these drugs are called the cycloplegics right uh, you can say the the tropicamide or the mitracel is actually you can uh, is somehow a cycloplegic drug but uh, i should i think this drug should added in the midratex because the cycloplegic effect of the tropicamide or you can say the midracels the midracel is actually the brand name and tropicamide is a formula of the midracel so the midracel or the tropicamide which is the same actually is not actually the cycloplegics it it is helpful in the dilation of the pupil right so the atropine the cyclopentolate and homotropine these drugs are actually the cycloplegics which convey which show both of the actions like paralysis of accommodation and dilation of the pupil and now we will discuss about the mechanism of action of the mitratex like the phenylephrine like the tropicamide right so how it dilates the pupil as you know that there are two muscles in the pupil the sphincter pupillae muscles which is actually helpful in the constriction of the pupil and the other muscle is called the dilator pupillae which is actually helpful in the dilation of the pupil right so the alpha 1 adrenergic receptors are there in the dilator pupillae at the level of dilator pupillae so when we instill the mitratic drug which is called the phenylephrine suppose then the phenylephrine will act on the radial muscles the dilator pupillae muscles and it will make the dilator pupillae muscles to contract and when the dilator pupillae muscle will contract so you can see this is the radial muscles which is dilator pupillae and this point is movable point of the dilator pupillae and this point is fixed point and when phenylephrine will act upon the dilator pupillae then the dilator pupillae muscles will contract because it is radial muscles so this movable point will go towards the fixed point like this and when the dilator pupillae so this is the dilator pupillae muscles right and when it is contracted then the pupil will dilate right so this phenylephrine will act at the level of the dilator pupillae muscles and alpha 1 adrenergic receptors are there and these alpha 1 adrenergic receptors will help the dilator pupillae muscles to contract and when mus dilator pupillae muscle will contract the pupil will dilate and now we will discuss about the duration the dioptric allowance and age group for these drugs so first of all we have the atropine and you know that the atropine is the high potency the high efficacy drug and we can use atropine in the age of uh, less than 5 years right uh, in the children with the age of less than 5 years in those children we can use atropine and the atropine can also used as cycloplegic drugs for the retinoscopy right and the duration of the atropine is like you can say 7 to 14 days is the duration of the atropine right and the peak time of the uh, retinoscopy right uh, when we can perform the retinoscopy is uh, you can say uh, after 3 days 
after installation of the atropine after three days of the installation of the atropine you can perform the retinoscopy right and what is dioptric allowance now first we will discuss that what is actually the dioptric allowance right so in the cycloplegic refraction when we used atropine then what does it mean the dioptric allowance it means that how much accommodation is relaxed by the atropine right if i instill atropine that how much accommodation will relaxed by the by that specific drugs and that is called the one diopter and this dioptric allowance we deduct from the neutral points of the retinoscopic values and now we will discuss about the cyclopentolate the cyclopentolate is actually the formula and the, the brand name the commercial name is cyclopen right so in which age group in which age group we will prescribe the cyclopentolate for cycloplegic refraction right uh, so the age group is up to 5 to 15 years of age so if the patient is of age 5 to 15 years we can use cyclopentolate as cycloplegic drug right and duration is almost uh, two days or you can say the 48 hours right and the peak time for retinoscopy is after uh, you can say 40 minutes to one hour is the peak time to perform the cycloplegic refraction or retinoscopy and what is the dioptric allowance for cyclopentolate is 0 0.75 diopters right now the next is the tropicamide now the tropicamide uh, i think uh, we are missing the home atropine right the home atropine is actually home atropine so the home atropine is also a cycloplegic drug right and uh, in which age group we should prescribe home atropine for cycloplegic refraction uh, the age group is of five to eight years right five to eight years we, you can use home atropine or you can also use the cyclopentolate as well so that's why i say that cyclopentolate is actually the excessively used or frequently used drug for the retinoscopy for the cycloplegic refraction in retinoscopy right so home atropine is the age group for home atropine is five to eight years of age right and duration is for home atropine is six to 10 hours right and dioptric allowance for home atropine is 0 0.5 diopters and the next is and both of them are you can you know that these are mitratics the tropicamide the tropicamide is actually the formula and mitracel is actually the brand name right the commercial name if you go in the pharmacy you will ask about the mitracels if you want a tropicamide drug for cyclo for for any of the use right so tropicamide is used in the age group of more than 20 years right so both of these drugs the tropicamide and phenylephrine are the mitratics so both of these drugs are used both of these drugs are not used for the cycloplegic refraction right the rest of them the atropine cyclopentolate and home atropine are the cycloplegics right so they are used as cycloplegic refraction in retinoscopy right but tropicamide and phenylephrine are for the dilation of the pupil so what are the indication of both of these tropicamide and phenylephrine if you want to visualize the retina of the patient if you if you want to perform the fundoscopy of the patient if you want to visualize uh, the layers of the retina you need a dilated pupil to visualize the inner structures of the eyeball like the retina La, uh, like the lens or you can say if you put a light in the eye the pupil will constrict and if you instill the tropicamide or phenylephrine the pupil will dilate it right due to the alpha 1 adrenergic receptors all right so both of these drugs are for the dilation of the pupil and are used in fundoscopy when we want to visualize the retina when we want want to re, uh, visualize the inner structures of the eyeball right so both of these drugs are used for the fundoscopy to visualize the inner segments of the eyeball and these cycloplegic drugs are used for the cycloplegic drugs right so these drugs are also used if the eye is painful right if you have if you have a patient with the uveitis the inflammation of the uvea then you can use these drugs as well 
डाइट्रोपीन साइक्लोपेंटोलेट और द होमेट्रोपीन बिकॉज दीज आर यूज इन द पेनफुल आई एंड यूटस इज द मच पेनफुल आई सो यू कैन यूज दीज ड्रग्स दीज साइक्लोपलेजिक ड्रग्स इन द पेनफुल आई इन द यू वी आइटस बिकॉज इफ द आई इज पेनफुल एंड आई इज एकोमोडेटिंग एज वेल देन द पेन वुड बी राइट सो we can use these drugs in the painful eye in the uv itis the accommodation would be relaxed pupil will be dilated and i would be in the rest position so pain will be less right and the contraindications are you cannot prescribe the cycloplegics if your patient is of glaucoma if your patient is of angle closure glaucoma you are not going to prescribe these drugs atropine homotropine and cyclopentolate right all of these drugs are contra are strongly contraindicated i must say in ankle closure glaucoma so we have discussed about all the drugs which are anticholinergic drugs the anticholinergic drugs are also called the antiparasympathetic drugs right so we have discussed about all of these drugs the functions of these drugs the uses of these drugs the mechanism of action of these drugs duration age groups I think we have discussed all the major aspects important essential aspects of these drugs and in the next video we will discuss about that what is actually the importance of the working distance in retinoscopy